Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. Today's system is from the user Your Average Bird Enjoyer, so massive thank you to them for sending their simulation. But without further ado everybody, let's get into this. So their system is called the Monodico system, I believe I'm saying that right. So let's go ahead and load it up, it should be here on the subscribe already, and there it is. Alright, let's see, uh, let's see what, we have, what we have got. Okay, right, ooh, hello. What's going on here? Right. So, uh, hello, this is System I made a while ago, but I've decided to share it on Steam Workshop now. Please enjoy. I will skip over the asteroids, smaller moons, and dwarf planets, but they are all customised. Okay. Right, where, where are we? Oh. Okay, I'm guessing we're heading over here. Right. Alrighty, so. All this on. Alright, here it is. It, this simulation runs as well. Look at that. Very cool. Okay. So, Monodico's A and B. So A and B are two binary stars with uh, two, what used to be three, smaller stars orbiting it. They are both large stars that are in the middle of their main sequence phase. Okay. So, okay, so you can see both. Is there two, is that the second star in there somewhere? No, that's a planet. There's the other star. I don't see the other star. A and B are two binary stars. That's the second star. Why am I going mad? A and B. Oh, right. A and B are over there. Interesting. That says more. There's a lot of stars in here then. Okay, got you. So there's both of these. So then we've got uh, Monodico's Clara. Clara is an odd star, which is over here. Alrighty. So, being the result of a collision of a small orange dwarf and a larger orange dwarf, colliding this leads to it being known as a blue straggler star. It is in fact so bright that it does provide some very small warmth to the planets in the Monodico's Pol Polonium system. Okay, so we're going around the planets of this, these stars first. So, oh, this one star. Oh, no, there's a few in here. Okay, so we've got Clara B. Looking good. Okay. So, a puffball planet, it managed to hold on to its star during its collision, leading to it becoming extremely hot, with one pole burning and the other one being cool enough to not glow. Kind of like a more extreme version of our winters and summers. Hoo hoo! Alrighty. And then we have uh, Clara C, so that's the next one out over here. Oh, there's an asteroid there, so we'll quickly have a view of that. A few asteroids in there, as we can see. Okay. Then we've got C over here. Okay. So a super Earth, Clara C has a hot surface and almost um, it's almost like a less cratered, more brown version of Mercury. It may have had some sort of atmosphere in the past, though its star may have torn it off during its collision. Okay, awesome. Right, so there we go. So now heading to uh, Monodico's Polonium, which I believe is the star that we started at over here. Yep, looks to be a more of a red or an orange dwarf class. Okay. So the dwarf. It is by far the star with the most unique planets orbiting it. It is an orange dwarf a bit smaller than the sun. It is believed that um, this star is solely being pulled away from the other stars due to influence from other stars. Okay, interesting stuff. Okay, right. So, first of the planets around here. I've actually got B. Oh, there we are. Mercury-like object. It is tidally locked to its star, having a thin atmosphere of water which mixed with its reflectivity it makes the planet um, colder than expected for its distance from its parent star. Alrighty, okay. Let's see what else, uh, what else, okay. So we're going B straight to D. So where is the C? Is there a C? There is a C. I guess it's a dwarf planet. There's no description for it. It's pretty small, as we can see. Not much going on there. It's got some asteroids around it as well. So here they are, some asteroids are hovering around here, okay, that's cool. Right, so next up, heading to D over here. An Earth-sized world. It's almost like a parallel Earth. It has oceans made of sulfur dioxide that comes from its volcanic activity. Almost like a weird version of Earth's water cycle with a thick atmosphere. Alrighty, okay. Right, so we've got D1 over here, or DI. Little patches of water on there, okay, check that out. The only natural satellite, it is believed to be a remnant of a past collision, possessing a thin atmosphere with a composition not unlike its parents. Okay, excellent. Right, next up we have E over here. Okay, right, so... A super Earth. 
um, this is a rocky planet with ice covering a lot of its surface, although said surface is hidden by a beautiful red atmosphere. If we have a look underneath, there you go. Kind of like a Titan in colour. We've got a little eclipse going on at the moment by the parent or um, on the parent planet by the moon here. Very nice. Okay. Excellent stuff. So next up we've got E. So we've got E1 here. Is that E2? E1 is that one then. Yep. The crater moon. It is not unlike our own moon, though it is believed to have formed in a less destructive way. Okay. Right, and then we have F, which is the next one out. Polonium F. So a lot of asteroids here. So there's a full-on sort of asteroid belt region here by the looks of things. There it is over here. Ooh, okay. Check it out. Ah. Interesting stuff. So, what is going on here? Right, so, almost like um, larger, harsh Mars, Polonium F has a thin atmosphere and is completely covered in massive ice sheets. Its cold temperature is not helped by its rings blocking even more light. Are there rings? I do not see rings. Let's uh, have a look. Are we on uh, enhanced? Oh, we already are on enhanced. Doesn't look like there is a ring system. Okay. No, it's definitely F, isn't it? Yeah. Huh. So, F has one of the moons as well. You, uh, I'm sure one's in here. The major moon, I think, is this one, Fi. Or F1, I should be saying. Possibly a small captured object. Um, its surface is pretty odd. The youngest parts being where craters temporarily melt parts of its surface. It has beautiful views of the planet and its rings. Yeah, so there's definitely going to be rings around this guy. Let's just, uh, let me just go ahead and uh, add those ourselves. Quickly, uh, give it a somewhat look of what it should be. So, let's quickly go ahead and add those. Oh. Oh, no, the button's underneath the... Ah! Oh, uh, can I? Oh no, I can't get to it. The button's underneath the menu. Ah oh, man, okay. I just pretend it has rings. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's both of those. All right. So now we're heading to. Uh, is it I? Isn't it? Oh, I scrolled down a bit, didn't I? All right. Where are we? Uh. So J. Yeah. Over here. Wow. Well, did we do uh, F? J. Oh, so we didn't. It doesn't. It skips over G, and it, which is a very small minor world, as we can see. Okay. So there it is. H as well. H and oh, where's H and I then? So it goes. That's J there. So you can see there's I. Okay, and then it goes straight to J. All right. So here it is. So a ringless Saturn. This J is known to capture any object it can from the astro belt near it. It often causes infrequent uh, Shoemaker Levy 9 type events or even worse. This causes much darker bands. So that's a lot of collisions. This one eats up a lot of stuff. Okay. Interesting indeed. Okay. Right. It has a lot of moons going around it. So first of the moons here, the one with the description. A very small object. It has a thin atmosphere of ammonia and argon. This, along with a purple surface, makes an alien world not like most others. It's getting pretty dark out here from the starlight as well. So we've got JV, so J5 as well over here. Now, I have to size object. JV has a thin atmosphere of lakes and methane living in its surface, often gathering in its older, larger craters. This almost perfectly circular lakes of methane scattered around it. Excellent. Okay. Right, next up we're going to the K planet. Let's see if there's any other moons of interest here that don't have descriptions so it looks to be all minor bodies. Yeah, okay. Okay, so where are we? So Yep, so K is next up. There's a lot of uh, orbits around it, so here it is. The closest, uh, um, the massive object, K, is much larger than Jupiter. Its unique coloration is caused by a part collision with a smaller object at high speeds, making it more yellowish band. It is in fact so large that its star is almost binary with it. Excellent. Okay. You got K1 over here, the closest moon. It is littered with volcanoes and dried up riverbanks. All right. Got the second one over here. A Mercury-like moon. It has no atmosphere, but does have slight volcanic activity. Most said of Semitil has been launched into space, leaving it pretty boring rock. 
Let me go to the fourth one. So where's Ivy? Oh, God, I'm in the wrong order. Right. There's Ivy there. So it's a blue one. Oh, wow. Well, oh, that's, yeah, that's, oh, that's VI. Hang on. I need IV, which is the fourth one. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, it's very dark, isn't it? Pretty similar to uh, K2. It is, uh, where are we? Oh, God, I've lost my, uh, I've lost my place. Where was I? So this is K4. Yeah, so pretty similar to K2. It's pretty, another boring rock. Most notable feature is the second largest of the K of the moons. Okay. It's got that interesting blue atmosphere, though. It's got something going for it. Really interesting stuff there. Right. So now we're heading to 5, or V. Where is V? There it is. So 5 is closer than 4. The Roman numerals there. An interesting Titan like world. A Titan like moon. I wonder if he's got these the wrong way around. I reckon the one we just looked at should be 5, and I reckon this one should be 4. Another small boring rock. Most total features the second largest. Yeah, I bet you that's meant to be... I think he's got them the wrong way around. And then this one over here is the Titan one with the blue atmosphere. It must be. It has an atmosphere of rich and oxygen made as... Yeah, it's got to be that one, hasn't it? For sure. Okay. Cool. So that makes more sense. So an interesting Titan like moon is a world that would have collided with um, swapping between the uh, planets. It has an atmosphere rich in oxygen as well as an ocean made of oxygen as well. Okay. Yeah, it definitely makes more sense with it being that description. Okay. So four and five are the rocks. I thought it might, yeah, because it goes five, four. I mean, yeah, some of the numbers. So you got you got nine there, IX, that's nine. That's closer than uh, four and four, that's closer than four here, which should be five. Interesting. The number three is really far out, yeah. Kind of all in a random order, those Roman numerals. <laughs> right. So next up, we're heading to Pumo num one. So, okay, so what's, where's that then? Uh, where are we? Or oh, I, I, it's just I. <laughs> Over here. The Trophian planet that is a surviving core from a collision. It has a thin atmosphere of hydrogen that remains from its collision. It's pretty, its surface is pretty volcanic rock. There it is, okay. Then we have I, I here. One, one. A captured planet, its surface is almost as dead as its parents. It's pretty dead. There it is. Next up, we've got M over here. Where are we? There. Very dark. See, it's barely receiving light from either of the stars. You see, it's receiving light but from that binary set over there. A featureless ice giant is a pale bluish color. Most of the light that reaches their planet mostly comes from uh, Bondico's Clara rather than its own parent star. Yeah. So. M1, where is that? Over here. The Pell. It is a large icy moon with a spectacular white surface. It is the second largest moon in the whole of the system. Okay. How large is that said moon? 0.248 Earths. Okay. M2 over here. A surprisingly rocky moon for its distance from its parent. It is made of more lighter rocks and heavier metals, making it less dense than other moons its size. Excellent. And we have M3 as well over here. Surprisingly, uh, what's it? An intelligent light moon. It has a thin ring of volatiles around its parent from some simulation. It has a pretty thin atmosphere. And then number five, V, is here. So we're pretty much in almost peak darkness at this point. A pretty basic moon, not like like um, polonium M2. I hope you enjoyed the system. If an opinion guy does this, I'd like to say thank you for looking at my system. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. And there it is. So that is everything. Okay. There's a lot of moons in here, though, isn't there? Around each of them. A lot of minor objects. So there's a lot more further things out here as well. I'm guessing they're all just minor objects. I mean, doesn't they don't look very customised. But yeah, it's all named. Uh, yeah, put some effort into it, obviously, so you can see. It's a good range of stuff, all different orbits. So it's quite a good customization with the orbits. It's so the simulation runs as well, so that's always a plus. Very nice. You have that system there, and then obviously further out here, you have the binary with that third star as well, and then this is obviously the fourth star um, at the distant reaches of this entire system. So there we go. Let's get a lineup of everyone. And there you go. So you've got the two A, B stars, you've got the Clara star, and then you've got the main star, which everything has been orbiting. Onto the gas giants. Here you go. 
There's your full lineup. Looking good. And there we are. It's a nice blue titan like moon there. You got that one there. The uh, looks like methane. There's methane oceans on that one by the looks of it. Or was it? Oh yeah, it's liquid methane. Yeah, okay. Nice. So there's a, there's a full lineup of everybody. Looking very good. So there we are, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this system. If you did, make sure to press that like button and subscribe for more. Helps on journey to 50,000 subscribers. Again, a massive thank you to the uh, curator of this system, your average bird enjoyer, for sending this in. Hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, that will send on everybody. Make sure you have a great day out there. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.